Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 with the former Zerg World Champion in the red, the Executioner. It's Rogue, but he's up against my favorite creative Protoss to watch recently. We have Nightmare, the Surgeon. A best of five Protoss versus Zerg Finals. The old school versus the new. And I know many of you may be in that first camp, but it would still be awesome if before we get started, you could smash that like button and subscribe and try not to reminisce too much about when there was like one to five stars on YouTube so you could tell actual quality or even like see dislikes. But don't worry, I can see the dislikes. So. Jimmy, what are we at? What? 1,403 likes on this video on this cast. I'll cast another one and I'll probably do it anyways. I, I don't know what else I'd do with my life. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far and hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better cheeky attempted a pylon block by nightmare on the third base but rogue dispatches it not bothering to take an alternative third just delaying it slightly and the overlord gliding menacingly as only something with that many tentacles can um but void ray on the way becoming a much more commonplace option the threat of what you might do when you have a void ray i think is most of the purpose as you deny the scouting information, you keep them in the dark, and nothing is more dangerous than the dark. So, Overlord, hiding in the back corner. I'm sure the Void Ray will come to chase it. And if it wasn't a Void Ray early, then the Overlord could come back in and get some more information. But of course, the Void Ray existing is information in and of itself. Zergling speed. Wait. Void Ray is going straight across the map. Did... Does he not want to deny that Overlord Scout? Interesting choice. He wants to get anything else out there. There's still a few Overlords hanging out. I mean, the one in the main base will die eventually. So if you can get any... What? <clears throat> Nightmare. How many times did your mom tell you not to prematurely light up your void, right? Okay, now you wasted the cooldown. That wasn't... I don't know what happened there. But he... he prismatically aligned for a moment not that it makes a big difference he's still going to be able to kill any void rays out here but rogue does come in and he sees the oracle on the way quite a revelation for him that that's going to be happening behind and the overlord like <clears throat> the void ray coming back from nightmare so i guess object permanence isn't an, an expert thing in the well three kills uh, the Oracle ends up taking a lot of damage. Over... Uh, it's still here! Uh, <laughs> Void right now coming back to deal with it, but the Overlord's just been hanging out this whole time. So while he's killed multiple Ovis out on the map, I've, I've never commentated about a single Overlord, I think, so much as this game. As Nightmare continually turning a blind eye, incredibly ironically, to the Overlord that's seeing everything. It will see the Twilight in the Forge. It will see the Robo, the additional gates. Down goes an Oracle. And, uh, not finding a lot of damn. Where are you going? I... Nightmare? Um... His controller thumbstick obviously having some issues and uh, a bit of a rambunctious start for him. Though Rogue, his economy hasn't taken off too dramatically. He did have to build those spore crawlers across the board. He's got a decent chunk of, elite of Zerglings. So 63 to 61 workers. All these little micro mistakes are kind of taken away from the uh, macro successes of Nightmare, who has comfortably gotten his third, has plenty of workers, is getting gases five and six, alongside a robotics bay, a second robo, and now a warp prism as well. So Rogue, who's getting an infestation pit, and probably it's not gonna be, it's very small chance of swarm host, but cloudy with a chance of hive. <clears throat> Hydralis now on the way. And that infestation pit, nearly complete, but two colossi in production simultaneously, extended thermal lance, a uh, very anti-hydra composition 
coming together. But a hive already begun. There's the lurker den for rogue. And it looks like we're speeding up to tier three tech past these early uh, altercations here. Overseer, tracking the path of its forefather. And just gonna hang out in the corner. Is that Void Ray still around? It is. It racked up four kills. I don't know if they were all... Killed three overlords. So, not a bad take. Rogue up to 80 drowns. But, uh, takes out the Observer as well. Sends out a Changeling. And... Whoa, that warp was of dangerously close phases in and phases out to the unit's lost half. Rogue snipes it off and then undercuts the entirety of this attack. It is a bit ambitious moving on the creep. Of course, the Colossi, very dangerous to the Hydras and Langs, but it doesn't have extended, well, neither of them have extended Thermal Lance. What if you had to equip it individually? Uh, and with Queens there to absorb some of the hits, they're not, they're not too troubled by getting hot and bothered, so. Queen's not light units, nor are they heavy, but they're perfect, all right? This message brought to you by big, um, I mean, regular size queens. Six lurkers on the way. Lurker spines. Uh, lurker range, rather. Seismic, oh, wow. No, no, I don't care about what's happening on the map. Nightmare's doing a SimCity thing in his main, like a Bronze League hero. Six pylon package. If you buy six, you get the seventh free. Everybody knows that. So, <laughs> a beautiful pylon uh, menagerie. And that will bring Nightmare to potentially 200. In fact, that, that was too many pylons. <laughs> he doesn't really need them yet, but here we are. Both players going to work up to 200 supply probably by about the 10 minute mark after just poking and prodding across the board charge completing soon as zealots are sent out for a potential side attack couple colossi back at home just in place to deal with uh, a zergling counter so nightmare's speciality is this technical execution of complicated unit compositions Whereas Rogue's specialty is ripping your face off. So, Rogue a lot less subtle with how he uses his army, but he's so decisive with it that sometimes he'll win games he has absolutely no right to. Because when somebody attacks you with an army in confidence, sometimes you flinch. And that has been the history of much of Rogue's career, including against players like Malrith. Lurkers just ripping through the zealots nidus spire adrenal glands on the way void ray lights up and turns it off again in order to maintain the lock takes down the overseer that will make it a little harder to find a good nidus location but all right no rush 10 minutes over the closest thing we're gonna get and now we're gonna fight fleet beacons on the way for nightmare zerglings overrunning the zealots the lurker count is damn high. The revelation can't catch all of it. Does he have any observers? Just one. It's with the army here. That oracle going to be very important. Fires off a disruptor salvo. Knocks out one lurker. Another volley. And another one down. The lurker's looking like part of the map with how much rogue is spreading them out. Adds five more in. But what he really needs is vipers in order to be able to dismantle this composition. Looks like he's just going to try to jump it. Disruptor shot ends up canceling a couple lurkers. Nidus to the north side. Zerglings running into the third. Wow, he's actually blocking like half of his mineral line in order to stop. Well, the Zerglings are like, job's finished. Meanwhile, Disruptor shot center mass, knocks out two of the lurkers, trying to bash through, but more lurkers on the high ground are slicing through even the shields of the Archons. And even though Nightmare has a lot of, oh my God, what's going on there? Oh, Nightmare gets his main army beaten back, but is doing damage with the Zealots. Rogue, wait, my life for ire, right guys? I don't. The changelings were trying to block the way. A lot of things happened across the board very quickly. Uh, Nightmare coming in again with his main army. Still, Rogue with his religious objection to vipers. And now, well, okay, now what? 
Rogue w managed to deal with all the counterattacks. He lost drones and then replaced even more than he lost, and he's now at 95 of them. Hydra's backing off just a little to deal with the Zealots. The Lurkers are out on their own. Big Lurker counter disruptor shot bashes into two Lurkers, but four, five of them, four of them, now on the third base, and those fancy cannons will be removed. Meanwhile, Archon's piling into the fray. Hydras and Lurkers, but there's not enough of them here. Is there detection? Indeed there is. Lurker incinerated. The rest of the Lurkers have an escape Nidus to work with. 15 probes down. Drones on the run from the 6 o'clock base. Lurker taken out at the third. And chasing down the drones. The extended thermal lances will immolate most of the workers from this base. And everybody else gets to participate as well. Wait, okay. that's. A, I don't know what's going on there. Ground weapons level three. Mothership is on the way. Still no vipers out of Rogue. It was down to 71 workers. He lost 21 drones, but he kept the base. So, bit of a mixed bag there. Tactical Nidus. Back at home. A more brood war style, so you can just move between your bases quickly. Very important for lurkers. I mean, Nidus also good for moving between your opponent's bases quickly. Nightmare. The stalwart Void Ray. Looking to establish its legacy as the protector of the main. And so far, no Nidus has been able to get that far. The Zerglings, only plus one attack, but Adrenal Glands is quite an upgrade. Blinks away the Stalker. And Nightmare still boxing out with an army to the north side. All right, things slow down as both players kind of reassessing their army composition. And mostly coming up with the same thing. Nightmare has shifted from as many disruptors into a mortal archon, a much more brute force composition, but it could very well work. Meanwhile, disruptor shots from downtown find four lurkers with a single shot. Softens them up, knocks them out, but more lurkers on the high ground. Hydra's going down. Zergling's coming in for the flank. More archons just wandering up. The Immortals in front will be pincushioned by the Queens as well as the Hydras, but one Immortal left over. A relatively even fight. And yeah, almost equal in, in resources lost. Nightmare ends up losing a, a bit more gas and a few more minerals. But he maintains his position, and with the Mothership now, how many Overseers does Rogue have? I don't know how many he has with the main army, but... Uh, at the right time, with only one or two Overseers, you pick them off and then use the active cloaking on the Mothership. And that could just be a game win right there. But first, Nightmare's gonna have to deal with the Lurkers in his third and his fifth base. I guess fourth and fifth, maybe. I'm not sure how we're counting it. Either way, two of his bases. Meanwhile, the Templar standing by the probes. Still no detection on either side. Recall back! <laughs> a very uh, strong response to a single unit, but with no detection. And detection is not easy to come by as Protoss. Every bit of your detection that isn't a cannon costs gas. So, and production time and supply. Oracles and observers, both are quite a drain uh, on your economy. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it certainly adds up over time. You have to keep rebuilding observers and oracles. It can amount to thousands of gas a game. And more like a thousand usually. But the Zerglings on top of the base yet again, Nightmare. Um, I don't know if stop position is the call here. As plus one Adrenalings are absolutely eviscerating the mineral line. He burrows a few Lings in there. Did I just hear a recall? He tactical recalled some Zealots to try to outflank the Zerglings, which... All right, Estrella. I don't... Not entirely convinced that was a valuable maneuver but the cooldown isn't too long on the mothership recall it is just over a minute i believe so not it, definitely an underutilized aspect of it recalling forward to the mothership where is the void ray it's on patrol but this time it's a little late unfortunately for rogue actually there's a nidus already on the way and you can only build one at once per nidus network that's why you'll see some players build multiple he sees the beautiful package of pylons And a Nidus in the main will look to ruin it. Because this is why Protoss can't have nice things. If there was ever a time to light up that Void Ray. 
Uh, this night is there's nothing in the network right now. Another Nidus. Nightmare being driven back. And things slow down yet again. Truly a boxing match between these two. As they've gone several rounds. But this is the kind of thing that certainly undercuts your position. Finally, the main base is assaulted by the lurkers. The Immortals, there's no detection. He's trying to go for the Nidus. The Immortals are ripped apart. The Void Ray is lit up to deal with a secondary Nidus, but the problem is already inside the house. Be careful with that observe. Almost storms his own observer to death, but this is doing too much damage right now. He knocked out some of the gateways. He's ripping through a lot of the robo units, and he gets into the escape Nidus. Meanwhile, lurkers at the fourth and at the north. We have 19 more probes dead. 85 to 47 workers in dropping. Multiple Nexi falling simultaneously. A counterattack is easily dispatched by a handful of lurkers. And there's still the Nidus. He's active cloaking just to save the base, which is still getting hit because the, the pylon is not detected, but he gets a revelation. But Nightmare, oh, it's a himself right now. He's down 60 supply. Rogue with the backstab and the Nidus. Just... And now Nightmare kind of bleeding out. It... Rogue didn't have to win a fight to win the war. He undercut the economy and the infrastructure. Nightmare still has a very scary army, but he can't seem to force Rogue into a fight. Every time he takes some steps forward on those fancy Colossus legs, he has to take two back. And now with the Overseer here, Mothership targeting it, but the Nexus is dead. And now more Zerglings into the fourth. The Mothership will be recalled. Wow, it takes so much damage. Plus two attack already done on those Corruptors. Now Nightmare has to do a clearly all-in counterattack. As Rogue is very aware of how limited the bases are. He's building a Nidus at a potential expansion location. He's taking both corners. There are 27 lurkers on the field. So... While Nightmare has a comparable army supply, he's not able to rebuild much if it... Well, he actually has a lot of money in the bank. He's not really building anything. He lost some pylons to the attack. Rogue, of course, has more. More storms coming through. That is the one thing we didn't have before. Here comes the mothership looking for an opportunity, but another dozen lurkers just scampering on up. The storms are good, but not good enough. It takes three storms to take out lurkers. And that's if they're sitting through it. Mothership knocked out. Time warp, but the damage is already done. Nightmare going forward because there's really no use going back. The change... Let us in! Let us in with you! I don't... I don't know what's going on. The night is having some network connectivity issues. Uh... That they get, you put your lurkers in, you take your lurkers out, you put your lurkers in, and you burrow them all about. But Nightmare really struggling to pull it together here. The detection is all over the place. He has to storm. He storms changelings. Which is both hilarious and sad on multiple levels. The Lurkers are closing in. The Corruptors are melting out of the sky. But the Immortals and the Colossi are crumbling. The Archons evaporated. The Storms will not stem the tide. And the Zerg are enclosing, encompassing, and eclipsing Nightmare with a decisive victory in Game 1. No. There were only two options. Rogue! with a decisive victory in game one. Nightmare not able to find his footing. Honestly, a bit sloppy from the start.
between the first Void Ray. The entire purpose of the first Void Ray is not just to look cool, all right, 4v4 players, but it it's to deny scouting. And the one thing Nightmare did not do is deny scouting. He killed a few Obies out on the field, but that pales in comparison to keep him in the dark about whether or not you're going Twilight, more Stargates. It just, it failed its main objective. And that means we're gonna have to try it again on Amphion. Game two. Mm, hopefully Nightmare can pull it together. You can see the theory there and the like setting up for the multi-pronged attacks, willing to use that ground army against lurkers. It's just rogue. Give him an inch, he'll take a kilometer. Like, you're not, you can't let up on him. Well, we see what happens if you do. He's so dangerous. I gotta point out as well, it amuses me. Rogue is using the Maru portrait. I believe Nightmare is using Cyril, but I'm not 100%. Um, but Rogue using the Maru portrait. Kind of feels like a collecting skulls situation, though, as Rogue has beaten Maru, I think, more than the other way around. Especially in some high-profile GSL finals. I'm reminded, like, uh, Rogue... I'm, not, I'm gonna throw a year out there, and it's probably gonna be wrong, but... 2018 GSL season, we'll say two. I don't know. I don't even know if that year is right. But we're rogue 4 1. I don't think it was 4 0. It might have been 4 0 against Maru. And every game, well, I guess Dark learned from him as well, but every game was just hitting him in the face with roaches the moment he looked away. Because Maru has always had this compulsive tendency to go 3 CC no matter what. Most of the time, when he's most successful, he'll temper that. Where he will be less committed. Like, sometimes he'll get the starport before the third CC. But there have been times in his career where he just flatly refuses to do anything but rush three command center. And that means Rogue flatly refuses to do anything but punch him in the face before he gets any units that can really counter him. And again that killer instinct coming through i think nightmare had the better like uh slightly better setup because rogue he didn't build any vipers he, he won that entire game without building an infester or a viper and really he didn't use many queen he just he rejects your legacy of the void meta and he substitutes his own which is the old legacy of the void meta before you had to use spellcasters in every late game fight in order to be kind of competitive as there Brenda, get out of the way! Shut up, Susan. We're getting there. We already put the creep tumor down at the bottom of the ramp. Now is not the time to complain. All right, maybe when an oracle comes in and you're not in position to deal with it, maybe then we'll complain. Maybe we'll remember this moment then. Wow, Brenda, this is... Feels like you're really shoehorning this bit into the beginning of the game. We don't wear shoes, Susan. I don't... Never mind. Just okay. I'm <clears throat> oh, sorry. I uh, blacked out for a moment. Oracle comes in, Queens. Oh, well, nightmare. Seems committed. So, as is tradition, the Oracle takes critical damage to kill drones. Looks like nightmare likes getting three drones, but being one or two knitting needles away from death. A lot of players will do two, and then being in the orange. All right. Now, and those things can't get repaired, so. I'm becoming more confident in my assessment that it is a subconscious move to feel like you don't have to micro your oracle anymore. Like, uh, you, this oracle's in the red, so of course we're not going to send it into the mineral line. So we'll get what damage we can, and then we'll get off the creep. Another oracle, two kills in the red. He's got like half an oracle of health between them. Twilight Forge on the way. We didn't see any real blink aggression, just a defensive style from Nightmare last game. But I think the blink aggression, putting it right on the edge of the creep and sitting on your doorstep, sitting on your lawn. And okay, what's happening here? Moracles trying to kill the queen, goes in, takes some damage from the Get off my! You killed Susan! 
You bastard! <clears throat> Nightmare, uh... So, even if you kill the queens, there are 150 minerals. Compared to 150 minerals and, this is true, 150 gas. And you have to build a stargate. So, trading oracles for queens is almost never worth it. Especially when it leaves your oracles out of position to deal with attacks like that. A couple probes down, a few units, not a big deal. But now, Rogue, in doing that attack, saw there was a third base online, obviously. And that Nightmare does not have a bunch of army supply coming across the map. Now, here come the Stalkers. But Rogue, able to get a fourth base. He's got road speed on the way. But, well, how many units are there, actually? Rogue did kind of throw away his Zerglings, and he's looking to do it again. Nightmare, tiptoeing on the edge of the creep. Pylon placement is really good to block the Zerglings and mining, but, I mean, that comes comes with it. Terrans of supply depots. Look what they must do to mimic a fraction of our power. Though we'd never say that out loud. This time, a lot more Stalkers coming across. Six gateways, which is enough to really put the pressure on a Zerg player who, uh, isn't respecting them. Just roaches are not going to be enough. Ravagers on the way, Zerglings as well. Nightmare with a good, a good economy at the back. He's got 66 probes. He's working on a Robo Bay, but he does want to get some damage done with the Blink Stalkers here. All right. Now the Queens poking and prodding at the Oracles. The creep going to be the springboard for many of these units, but more swarm host R Sir Richard and his band of swarm host brethren called in on this most auspicious of maps. And there's the Nidus. Wait, the Nidus was already on the way. Once a more mid-game option. Ro I think this is Rogue acknowledging that Nightmare is much more focused on the mid-game. So instead of trying to skip to lurkers and potentially getting ground down, this is him striking back. So we will see. And Nidus on the way. Ooh. The Road to Ravager. Poking and prodding. Wow, look at that supply gap. Now, Swarm Hosts are some of the least efficient supply. But the Nidus comes out. And Nightmare backs off the unique to this map is the ability to essentially be locked out uh, where the Nidus is relatively safe from being taken out despite being so close to the main. The Blink Stalkers drawing out the Locust Swoops and that's a technical term. They're called Swoops. Takes out the Stargate, which could have repercussions later. And the Queeps! Get off my creep! But Brenda, this is the other side of the map. Did I stutter? Well, Roach Ravager coming into the fourth, and Nightmare clearly taxed up both sides. The Blink Stalkers, some of them falling without even using their Blinks. Nidus allowing him to transfer units back and forth. Rogue has multiple Niduses with the Queen to boot and protect them from the Oracles. Nightmare starting to stabilize a bit. He has Blink Stalkers and Colossi, and now charge is completed. Hive and Lurkers on the way. The Robo Bay is denied. And down goes the pylon as well. And why not? Why not go for the forge? It shouldn't be enough. They do a lot of damage, but not quite that much. But delays plus two weapons. Knocks out the Robo Bay. Nightmare just YOLO's out. Three stuck in it. No! Remember me. The queens are taken out. Rogue with the knight is up to the north side. Three stargates and a robo bay for Nightmare. Rogue is actually supply blocked at 170, which is allowing Nightmare to, to nearly equalize the army supplies. But the swarm host from the north side of the fourth base, and there's nothing there to defend. The zealots dive onto the locusts. Witness me. Another Nidus over to the left flank. He tries it. The Blink Stalkers are still in position to deal with it. Oracle is the only way to clear a creep. Minimap is becoming more and more of a mess as Niduses pop up every which way. Some Zealots taken out on the counterattack. A beacon. 
to the fleet is lit. And he calls to the sky toss for a... The last game, it just kind of meant mothership. But this time, he built three star games. So I, I think he's getting a little more advanced than that. Another knight is on the way down the center. I don't know how many knight swarms are out there in general, but pops back in. Drops a few of the locusts to zone out the knightus itself. Hold position in order to ruin the probes. And 13, 14 probes dead immediately. Another knightus comes through. Lurkers now being built. Rogue, it took a... What? Why is that? What is going on? No! A queen pinned up against the ends of the earth and executed by the zealot. Despite all this nightmare, still within 10 workers, holding on to all of his bases, and he has a good army to fight. Again, Rogue has uh, kind of skipped the entirety of hive tech aside from lurker upgrades. Does he have adrenal glands? No. He just wanted the, well, without the, without the upgrades. That's like driving a car with no tires. All right, you're not gonna get very far with those lurkers. Three carriers on the way. Well, two carriers and the next one when you invest in a new pylon. Well, Zerglings provide vision to get another Nidus up. Rogue is maxed out, and now he has to do something with it. Very sad, Locus. Complete their journey, one way or another. Another Nidus. The swarm hosts pop out. Waiting for their uh, next wave. He hasn't lost any of them yet. Been a great swarm host game thus far. But there's still some stalkers over there. <laughs> Awkwardly. Looking for an opportunity to get a Nidus in the main, I think, as well. Now just whips another one out. Oh, snipes off the Nidus, but he's he's creating an escape Nidus to buy time. The carriers have arrived. Spire's on the way. The escape Nidus. He's distracted by the Locust. He's already clicked onto it. Let me in. And the Swarm Host will escape, but the rest of the units are cut off by Nightmare's army, but the Lurker's in the center of the map. Lurker's down the mid lane. There is very limited time to recall back if you want to save this base, Nightmare. And now, wow, the line of lurkers just deleting everything in their path and then backing off before actually killing it. Another Nidus pops up. Oh, my. There's a bunch of idle probes in the main, but the carrier count is growing. Three carriers, half a dozen carriers is where it gets really dangerous, and he's working on plus two air weapons as well. But now Rogue has most of the bases on his side of the map, though he hasn't yet mined out the mineral wall. He's been using Nidus's to get around, which is certainly one method of doing things. Another base, only two lurkers, not quite enough to take it out. Nightmare still has the army supply to compete with what Rogue is doing. But again, Rogue has taken the initiative. He's taken the map, and that is most of the process to taking the game. He's just keeping so much pressure on Nightmare. He can't keep up. And, uh, Nightmare actually has almost 100 more APM. 330 APM is glacially slow as Zerg, but Rogue is using every little bit of it. And another pylon taken out and he depowers the forge again. Another Nidus. The lurkers dart into the center base and slice it to pieces. 13 corruptors on the way. Lurkers on a base. There's no detection. Oh no. Deja vu. We've just been in this place before. Lurkers everywhere and the observers are way too slow. But finally taken out. A lot of lurkers, which frees up more supply, I guess, for corruptors. Another knight is on the way. Rogue may be maxed out, but he doesn't have much gas in the bank. And that means he can't build any of that. Well, I guess he can build queens, the best unit, but. Couple swarm hosts pop out. Oh, is he clearing the way for everybody else? Probably. Takes out, yes, come on in, boys. The locusts pop to the main. The carriers growing in number and upgrades. We're going towards double digits, though Rogue looking to limit that count. Takes out a Stargate. Might get two. Maybe a little greedy with that secondary set of locusts. He definitely could have taken out the second Stargate if he focused on it. 
Stasis ward delays the inevitable on this base. Nightmare dipping in supply. As again, oh no, he's losing Templar. Does he even have Storm? He does. Doesn't use any Storm. Loses five, six Templar. He's trying to juggle all of these things, but he's dropping the ball across the board. Rogue is... He's everywhere and nowhere. He can't find a fight. He might even pick off a carrier here. Oh, the Corruptors! The Storms, but they're very limited. And Rogue comes in, ready to sweep the carriers out of the sky. Oh, no. Well, it knocks out a bunch of them. Hydras and Lurkers on the way. What's left? No more Lurkers left. So... Again, Nightmare. He's building up the Death Ball. Rogue has pulled it almost all the way apart. And he's... Wow. Rogue is playing to win. He now says, all right. Fine. Fine. Two Vipers in production. Nightmare can seem to find an opportunity. The, the creep is starting to encroach across the map. I don't know how much of that creep is just from Nidus Worms. Um, there's only one on the map, but most of the rest have been knocked out. Another wave. The Swarm Host. He hasn't lost a single Swarm Host this game. Kind of a lackluster Locust wave there. Only kills two probes and strips the shields on the Nexus. But... Uh, another set of spines. Rogue cutting down on his drone count to make sure the army supply is large enough to deal with the Sky Toss Death Ball. What is this? He's got observers, stalkers. He's trying to keep the creep at bay. A, uh, exhaustive process. Adrenal Lands is done. He's filling in. Rogue is filling in the other upgrades now. But the carrier count is, has grown. Well, he's at six, which is dangerous, but with this many Corruptors, is certainly not a deadly month. Three shields. <laughs> well, here we are again. Nightmare with the army, but almost no economy. He's, his main base is mined out. His natural is getting there. It's gonna have to be do or die. He's building two next side, but Rogue... Rogue doesn't actually have that much in the bank. He moves his Sporchard forward. Alongside the Lurkers. Just such a prickly location in order to, uh... Defend. And beyond all reason, they, they call this sort of style not just turtling, but porcupining. Um, and porcupine players, which I kind of like because... If you go about your business, it's not going to be great. But if you provoke them, well, you get a bunch of spines in your face. So probably the most accurate definition here. Takes out a cannon. And get over here. Yanks in. Parasitic bomb on top. I don't... Well, the, the Archons are evaporating to the... Oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, God. GG. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that all came apart. Yanks in. The Lurkers just slicing through the Archons. He has plus three ranged attack. Parasitic bomb helpful, but the Corruptor count is just too damn high. Rogue earning another decisive victory. Just ripping the carriers out of the sky. It's just so much. Nightmare. It feels like he's, he's keeping up. And then Rogue just... He's like, oh, you were trying and sprints ahead. The swarm host, the fact, the fact that Rogue uh, had a hundred less APM than a Protoss. 330 is approaching my APM, like the low side. <laughs> so to see it's both inspiring and uh, somewhat confusing. He's able to get so much done with, uh, it's just, a, it should really, demonstrate how incredibly efficient he is. It feels like Rogue has finally or nearly made it back. You know, he might already be back at the level he was before his military service. See, the unfair thing about well, everything in life 
but also especially StarCraft is you right now. Now let's let's translate this to maybe not the average person because the average person doesn't play ladder, but your average ladder goer. Say you were diamond five years ago. Um, let's put a percentile on it like it should have been originally. Uh, you were top 10%. Well, that might have put you at 3,500 MMR or something, let's say. Uh, probably not the actual number. We're just throwing numbers out there. Now you come back, and uh, that 35 MMR, that play level at 3,500 MMR. Wow, this is a clunky analogy and not being helped by the random asides. The point is, 3,500 MMR then is 2,500 now. Don't know the exact number, but even if you play an entire season and you do not go up in MMR, you didn't. You have improved at the exact average rate. I know that's not exciting. It's not exciting. Or you come back and you drop a few hundred MMR, which actually is how StarCraft works because MMR has generally dropped because of multiple reasons over the years. So you might come back. You're 3,500, you're 3K now. That might actually be the same percentile as it was those five years ago. So, welcome to StarCraft. Fuck you. That's how the MMR system works. Uh, when the intern decides to make a statement. Also, congratulations, you're in Masters League at 2,000 MMR. Anyways, moving on. But when applied to Rogue, I think Rogue is still at that level, or even higher than he was when uh, he had his obligatory military service. It's just, we've had several years of Serral and other Zergs, mostly Serral, to demonstrate what true late game looks like. And we see Rogue with this aggressive, this bounty hunter sort of style where he just takes opportunities and uh, uses them to their fullest. We've seen Dark, who much like Rogue has a ridiculous killer instinct, but also is able to manipulate those late game spellcasters in a way that makes it look impossible for all but the very highest level players. So Rogue still has that executioner style, but it's still very rare where he works in. And I think that's what Nightmare needs to do. He needs to force out that late game scenario. Like, he needs to force Rogue into that sort of composition. Problem is, Rogue is not sitting idly by. Nidus, Swarm Host, Lurkers everywhere. It's just simply, uh, Nightmare can't get anywhere close to the late game without already getting all his limbs cut off and Rogue running circles around him, heckling him with Locus. So. Well, that was a very clunky set of analogies. Like and subscribe for more incredibly ham-fisted, um, yet profound statements. Please clap. Adept Glaives. That's it. Just straight up Glaives. It's an Eclipse build. Oracles into Mass Adepts, which... There's a Baneling Nest on the way. Does he have a Roach one? No. Just completely skipping the Roach one in favor of Lings and Banes. So, the Adepts very well could get damage done because even with Banelings, there's no guarantees. There's only been one Oracle, which is already uh, potential alarm bells. You should have seen more Oracles at this point. A whole bunch more lings on the way. Rogue is only at 46 drones. Nightmare has 45 probes, and he's building more. But now we see 12 glaived adepts. Well, about to be glaived adepts. Is he using the spore wall? Yes. It's no supply depot, but it's kind of close. Baneling's on the way. Easily kills off the first one. Spore repositions in the wall. It's like a supply depot with extra steps, quite literally, as the spore crawler has to root and up, uh, root and uproot in order to open things up. The adept's just slicing through dozens of zerglings. He lost two of them, 26 lings dead. Quite a cost, but Baneling's on the field. Thing is, just keeping him busy, uh, look at the worker count, 55 to 48. 
And Rogue is now trying to catch up, but there's already adepts on the field, so counterattacks are not guaranteed to get damage done at all. Honestly, I feel I feel like this sort of style is wildly underutilized at the moment. We've seen a handful of players use it to great success. And this counterattack really shouldn't have gotten this much damage done. There were literally no units back here to defend. It's three probes. But the Adept Glaives force such a uh, dramatic response out of the Zerg. If they go Ling Bane, they have to use all their larvae. If they go Roaches, that delays their tech even more significantly. So now Nightmare has delayed uh, much of the lair tech out of Rogue by simply having Adepts exist. He hasn't done too much with them. He's going to cancel or, or complete the shade out. An infestation pit is already on the way, but Nightmare following this up with Blink. I really like his position right now. As Rogue is double it. Well, he's got a macro hatch on the way. I don't know if he's rushing high. The Banelings may crash in, but against the Depths with a good spread. Yeah, Banelings cost gas. I don't... <laughs> What's it ideal for Nightmare? Well, I'm also rooting for Nightmare because... Free zero it does not make for many uh, YouTube ads. So, well, it depends on the three zero. But. I know Nightmare could do better. It's just Rogue has a way of getting in people's heads and their base and anywhere in between. All right, that's a lot of stalkers. The Queen's trying to hold the line. The Banelings trickling in, getting some damage. But with no real range damage, sorry, Queens. The stalkers just kind of win the fight. The Zerglings are not enough here. The Queen's tanking some damage, but down goes the fourth base. And the Observer spots the Burrow Drones. He went Burrow, by the way. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. He's got 35 Stalkers. The Stalker count, he blunks forward, which is the worst case scenario for these Stalkers. Um, yeah, this is about as bad as it could ever get. He blunked into the Ling Bane on creep. And he's still going to win the fight here. Chases down the Queeds. And, well, a little late on those drones. Yeah, Nightmare just grinds his way through. All right, maybe he doesn't need to drag him to the lake. Just kill him before he can get anywhere at all. Some zealots warped in, but adrenal glands on the way. He just rushed to Hive to deal with it, but... Nightmare with a solid timing. Steals one away. Uh, definitely gets away with that kind of... Just casual glaives. He didn't even commit. Just the existence of the glaived adepts carved out so much space that he was able to springboard that into a blink all in. And not, honestly, not even all in. He could have killed the fourth base and backed off. I think killing the fourth base was the only part that needed to happen there. Everything else was just a bonus. So, Nightmare on the board. But you know what they say. Fool me once, and I won't get fooled again. So, the thing the thing about the Glaive to Depth time is, even if you know it's coming, it, well, if you know it's coming from the start of the game, you can find some sort of timing to undercut it. But... Even if you suspect it's on the way, and it's almost impossible to know for sure until the adepts themselves are on the field. Um, even if you suspect it, there's no direct response. Like, if you overcommit to units, they can just turtle up back at home. There's no, you don't need to commit with the adepts. If you undercommit, you die. So, you gotta toe that line. Um, and Rogue just coming out on the uh, underfunded economic end of things. All right. 
Inside Delta. Game 4. Been a great series, though. Rogue showing that he's still one of the very best Zergs out there. And while I'm somehow praying that Dark doesn't end up retiring, or I don't think Dark will retire in the exact sense. A lot of players will go to their military service and just say, like, we'll see what's happening when I, I'm uh, done with it. And nowadays, I believe it's only a year and a half. I, a year and a half is a for many players a lifetime and at this stage of starcraft 2 it's very hard to see players like rogue completed his service uh, over a year ago now but only in this last like six months has he really made it back the kind of depressing but also amusing thing is if rogue had another month or two it's very likely he would have qualified for the esports world cup because he was getting so making so much progress in both uh well maybe not so much gsl but like esl cups and other tournaments he almost had enough points to make it despite only participating for like half the year so um if and we're crossing our fingers uh we get another year then it's almost certain rogue will be back and added to the zerg roster even if dark i don't know what i'm gonna do uh, speaking of dark dark shrine meanwhile rogue is just making zerglings it that's it that's his entire build it's just a bunch of zerglings wait did he he sees the twilight again so his answer to what if he goes glaive to depths or something like that is what if i just made a bunch of zerglings and attacked oh nightmare didn't send the first adept out he has no scouting so, oh my god, he's drone rushing! Ah! Oh no, and the drones will mineral walk through and block him! Oh my god, wait, uh, wow, the executioner! Uh, fool me once, and I won't be fooled again. No Dark Shrine, no Adept Glaives, you get nothing! Good day, sir! that they're dry he's just right clicked on the dark shrine it's dead the gateways with a pylon powering all of his gateway production the drones are going home gg rogue he took offense to that rogue comes in and rips him apart with a drone rush wow That is, yep, that's Rogue. So I certainly hope that we get to see more. But Rogue with a 3-1 to one victory. And uh, honestly, it's almost more painful that Nightmare won that one, considering what happened after. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope it made your day just a little bit better. Thank you for checking out Patreon or YouTube membership if you got the means and motivation. But uh, otherwise, I hear liking and subscribing is still free. And good news, everyone. Um, I talked, I believe, just yesterday about how there's really no StarCraft II events scheduled, no major tournaments uh, with the Esports World Cup finishing up and uh, all that. But that has now changed. Um, one, ESL has announced that while they are in the off season. Um, they will still be having... Well, it's heavily implied there will be an ESL StarCraft II esports circuit for next year. Whether it'll look the same, it's unclear at the moment. But also, some other people have stepped up. Uh, Wardy will be putting on uh, weekly tournaments at the same time in the same fashion as the ESL Cups next month. And uh, he's also got some backing from other organizations like OSC and myself. Uh, and we'll be helping to fund the prize pool for probably more, ideally, than the weekly cups of ESL for those few weeks. So if you want to check out Wardy, um, maybe, you, well, we might have direct links to help fund these tournaments. So Wardy puts on tournaments all the time. Honestly, so many, like outside of ESL, Wardy is the organizer. And I really respect the amount of effort and the consistency 
and quality of events that he puts on. So um, I'm happy to support him doing it in exchange for showing you some of the best games. But if you want to watch it live, make sure to check out Wardy. And uh, if we have a, a way for you to directly support, well, uh, I'll let you know. So thank you for watching. And with your inspiration and your continued interest, we can keep showing off the best game in the world. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I'll see you soon. Good luck. Have fun. Stay tuned.